Welcome to the UChem tutorial on writing formulas for isotopes and ions. We're going to start this tutorial by looking at isotopes. We're going to write isotopic symbols after looking at the definition of an isotope. Then we're going to define ions and then we're going to look at ionic symbols. After that we'll do some practice so you understand how to write these symbols and then how to dissect meaning and gain meaning from these symbols. So let's take a look at isotopes. Isotopes are forms of the same element with a different number of neutrons, and those neutrons are located in the nucleus, so isotopes are forms of an element that have different overall uh, mass numbers, or the nucleus has a different structure, so they have a greater or lesser mass. So let's take a look at two different isotopes for potassium. You can see that they're different because of the difference in their mass number. So let's take a look at the breakdown of subatomic particles for each of these isotopes and then see how that relates to the symbol. So let's take a look at the atomic symbol that we've written here and that is the symbol written with the mass number at the top and the atomic number at the bottom and the letter indicating the symbol for the element potassium. So the number of protons in an element is equal to its atomic number, and that's 19 for potassium. You'll find that on the periodic table written above potassium. And then if you look at the mass number, that's 39. If you add the number of protons and number of neutrons in an element, you should get the mass number. So 20 plus 19 is going to give me 39. So let's do the same thing for potassium 40. And when I did that, what I found is the number of protons is 19, the number of neutrons is 21, and the overall mass number then is 40 because 19 plus 21 is 40. So I've checked my work there in determining the number of subatomic particles. What you'll see is the difference between the mass of potassium 39 and the mass of potassium 40 that has to do with the difference in the number of neutrons. Now, Let's take a look at ions. Ions are different from isotopes because ions have different numbers of protons and electrons. So they're forms of the same element with an imbalance in the protons and electrons. Over there on the left with those isotopes, the, the symbols that I wrote had an overall neutral charge and I didn't look at the number of electrons because that was equal to the number of protons. So now let's look at forms of an element that have an imbalance of the number of protons and electrons. So here's potassium again, and I'm looking at one of those isotopes from over there on the isotope side. And what I see there is I have a plus charge here with this particular potassium 39. So let's take a look at a breakdown of the subatomic particles, this time looking at the number of electrons as well as protons and neutrons. So for potassium 39, what I see is the number of protons is 19, as it has on the left. Um, the number of neutrons is 20, and the number of electrons is 19, as I'd written before. Now, for the ionic form, what we see is the number of protons and the number of electrons are different. And I have an excess of protons, that's why I have a plus charge. I have one more proton than I have electron. And so that gives me the positive charge on that potassium ion. Okay. So the differences between ions and isotopes, remember isotopes are forms of the same element with different mass. Ions are forms of a, an element with a different charge. Okay, And that charge comes from an imbalance in protons and electrons. So when I have that imbalance, I get an overall charge on that particular element, making it an ion. Okay, So we call a charged element an ion. Okay, so now let's do some work with this because it's easier to examine these and understand this if we give some examples. So let's do some practice. Let's write the symbol for the atom with, all right, and I'm going to give you a composition of subatomic particles. So take a look at what the symbol might look like if I had eight protons, eight neutrons, and ten electrons. So if you'd like, pause the video right now and work on that, and then in a second I'm going to reveal uh, what the answer to this is. So if you paused it, just hang out do your work, and then go ahead and press play. If you're going to continue, I'm just going to continue revealing my answer. Okay, so I came up with this answer, and what I did was I took a look at the subatomic particle composition, and I used my knowledge of mass number, atomic number, and charge to determine this. So let's take a look first at the mass number. That's the sum of protons and neutrons, so that's what gave me that A that's right there. 
The Z is the number of protons, that's that atomic number, so I just looked that up and moved it over. And then the charge there, it has an imbalance, right? Because I have more electrons than I have protons and I have more electrons by two. So that gives me my charge of minus two. It tells me I have two more electrons than I have protons. All right, so this allows me to take a subatomic particle composition and turn it into a symbol. All right, and this is a symbol for an ion, all right? And it's a specific ion. It's an ion with a specific composition of nuclear composition of number of protons and neutrons. Now I can be less specific. Um, if I don't want to specify the nuclear composition and all I want to do is say I have a population of oxygen atoms and these atoms all have a negative two charge, they're ions. And because of that I can show with this symbol O2 minus, that just shows me that I don't really care about specifying the number of protons and neutrons. What I do care about is that this population of oxygen atoms that I'm looking at are ions and they have a negative charge and they have two more electrons than they have protons. All right, so now let's do some more dissection like I did in the first slide. Um, let's take a look at some different forms of the element nitrogen. So let's find the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons, and then I'm gonna do some compare and contrast here for these species. So let's look at nitrogen 15, nitrogen 14, and a nitrogen ion that has a charge of minus three. So go ahead and look at these, determining the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons for each of these three. So I went ahead and did this and I found that for the nitrogen 15 it has seven protons, eight neutrons, and seven electrons. Okay. I looked at the mass number and the atomic number to determine this. For nitrogen 14, looks like I have a different number of neutrons. I have seven protons because it wouldn't be nitrogen otherwise. And I have seven neutrons then because seven and seven is 14. And then there's no charge so I have seven electrons. So for the next one, I have the same composition in protons and neutrons because there's seven of each because it's nitrogen 14. But now I have an imbalance with the number of electrons and it tells me I have three more electrons than I have protons. So I have 10 electrons there in that particular ion of nitrogen. So here we have a good way of having you compare and contrast the difference between isotopes of an element and an ionic form of an element. So let's see if you can pick out which of these are isotopes of the same element and which is the ionic form of the same element. So the isotopes, right, differ in mass number. So nitrogen 15 and nitrogen 14 are isotopes. And nitrogen 14 has that minus three charge on the very right, and so that indicates that this is an ion of nitrogen 14. All right, so this gives you some practice dissecting symbols, writing symbols, and understanding the subatomic particle composition for ions as well as isotopes. Okay, you should be able to distinguish the two by looking at the subatomic particle composition.